fits. Very heavy. Quite heavy. So there are some <clears throat> disadvantages to crowns, but but otherwise, they're quite important things. Queen Elizabeth II has passed away at the age of 96. Her Majesty's 69-year reign as Queen of England made her the longest-serving monarch in British history and the oldest-serving head of state. She leaves behind an enduring legacy and a kingdom united in grief. Elizabeth Alexandra Mary was born on the 21st of April 1926, the first daughter of King George VI. Elizabeth, the eldest child of King George VI, or Prince Albert, the Duke of York, was never supposed to be queen. Dad Prince Albert's family line had always been considered secondary to elder brother Edward's. But after just a 325-day reign, Edward VIII was immortalized for a scandalous relationship with an American socialite that cost him the crown. So he called it quits on his royal duties in the dramatic abdication crisis of 1936, and the crown landed on Prince Albert's head. And just like that, Princess Elizabeth became heir apparent. Her introduction to public life started at just 14, when she addressed British children preparing to evacuate at the beginning of World War II. And when peace comes, remember, it will be for us, the children of today, to make the world of tomorrow a better and happier place. Dutiful to king and country, Elizabeth enlisted in the Women's Auxiliary Territorial Service during World War II. By the end of the war, she'd reached the rank of junior commander, was a qualified mechanic and military truck driver. At 21, Her Majesty married her childhood sweetheart and the son of Prince Andrew of Greece, Philip Montbatten. One year later, the world welcomed the first of four children they would have together, Prince Charles, followed closely by Princess Anne. Following the death of her father, who had taken on the name King George VI, Elizabeth acceded the throne and was crowned Queen of England on June 2nd, 1953, at the age of 27. The very next year, Queen Elizabeth II became the first reigning monarch to visit Australia, bringing the nation to a standstill when she sailed into Sydney Harbour. About half of the three million people who cheer the royal couple slept on the pavements all night for a glimpse of this historic scene. Her tour was the single biggest royal event ever planned in Australia and saw the brand new Queen visit 57 towns and cities across 58 days. While the British Empire slowly shrunk in the 60s, Queen Elizabeth's family grew. She gave birth to Prince Andrew at the start of the decade and her fourth and final child, Prince Edward, in 1964. In 1981, the Queen gave her blessings to the heir to the throne, Prince Charles and Lady Diana Spencer, in a widely televised royal wedding that brought renewed hope for the family. But instead, the 90s brought turmoil, starting with the Queen's Annus Horribilis. 1992 is not a year on which I shall look back with undiluted pleasure. In 1992, her son Prince Andrew and his wife separated, her daughter Princess Anne divorced her husband, Prince Charles formally separated from Diana, and a significant portion of Windsor Castle was destroyed by fire the royal family's tragedies would only continue. The Queen came under close scrutiny, waiting for five days before publicly addressing Diana's death. But according to Prince William, she had shielded her grandsons from the ensuing news spectacle. Come what may, Queen Elizabeth always strove to provide unerring compassion and leadership in times of fear and despair. Many of you will know only too well from your own experience the grief that follows the death of a much-loved mother or sister. Mine were very much part of my life and always gave me their support and encouragement. Her Majesty, much like London, displayed that familiar optimistic resilience. They kept calm and carried on. Queen Elizabeth II will be remembered for modernizing the monarchy in times of great change, change that came through politics. The government's priority 
has always been to secure the United Kingdom's departure from the European Union. My government will make further progress to tackle the gender pay gap and discrimination against people on the basis of their... Enormous.